Hey guys, back for another episode. Today we're going to continue the um, build for my little DIY auto dryer, auto cure. I got a nice little uh, watermelon here from the greenhouse. I'm not sure if it's ripe or not. We'll have to cut open to it to see. But if you saw the previous episode in the series, we went over the design and what aspects and features that needed to have in order to functionalize something like this. And so one of the things that we said it, we wanted to have is a chamber. You could probably use, you know, just any plastic box type container, like something like this. Uh, maybe like a much larger one, like the lid that this came off from. This is in my grow tent, the actual container. So that's a possibility. The thing you really then got to consider is that if you're going to make it close to airtight, how do you seal it up? So with that in mind, I went with a bucket. A so this is a food grade five gallon bucket that I had. What I did was I bought this attachment that goes onto the top and has this screw and lid. You can see that they do claim that it is airtight. So these are for like storing food for long term for like preppers and stuff. Okay, so with that in mind, then obviously we have a very restricted area that we can use to attach the fan. So you could probably get a small blower fan or a small CPU fan perhaps that could possibly fit in here. But it's quite limited. And putting it on the side would also work, but you know, you got to account for the curvature if you wanted to seal it up. So as you saw in our design video, we went over some of the reasons that you probably want to actually have it at the bottom. If it's a flat box type shape for your chamber, then I don't think it really matters. But for this, I'm going to put it on the bottom. So the fan I'm going to use is I got this... Um, I think they call them component fans or something like that. And there, you see they have these little rubber feet. So they're meant to sit on top of like uh, Xbox. You could probably use one to cool off a ballast or a driver or something like that, but it has these feet so it doesn't vibrate. I think you could use an in inline one just as well as this type of blower one. So this one blows out the side here. So what I'm thinking is that it's going to attach on the bottom with this blower design. I think that would be just fine because this particular one is large enough that it would probably support the whole thing. If you had an inline one, then you would have to do what I'm going to describe next, which I'm going to do for this one anyway, and that is put some feet on it. So I had these um, leftover PVC pieces from a different project. I think there's one inch stoppers or plugs or whatever they're called. So I think I'm going to use three of these as feet, and you can see that that does provide enough clearance there. Again, for this one, you could probably just rest it on here because the air is coming out in this direction. But if you had a regular fan where the air is coming out towards the camera right now, uh, then you definitely want to put some feet on it. But I think that's a pretty good solution because there's all this flat workable area. And all you need to do to functionalize is to add something to raise it up a little bit. So we'll also probably find a little bit of foam that will let air through to keep dust out. And again, since it's on the bottom, I mean, I, I don't know if you really need to seal it or not. But I think I'll try to seal this up. And I found this O-ring that's the right size. So I went ahead and marked off the size of this uh, fan opening here. Yeah, this O-ring should work just fine. Like that. And so what I'll do is take off these feet and just go ahead and screw it onto here. And so this fan is just a USB one and it does have some speed control. And I'm going to cut this hole. I don't have a hole saw large enough to cut this. So I think I'm going to cut it just with a soldering iron. You could use like a hot piece of wire or something like that. And I'm going to do that so that it doesn't crack. So I'm going to be right back with you guys after I do that. 
All right, there it is with the fan installed. You can see the hole we cut out there. The four mounting screws for the fan and the three for the little legs. Made sure that the legs didn't obstruct the output of the fan. And there's a small hole here where the wires go in and I just taped that up. Not that it's really gonna matter, I don't think. Now, one thing I'm gonna wanna add to this <clears throat> is could be maybe some type of screen over here. Could probably even use the fan mounting screws to hold it down. So maybe something like um, bug screen, Maybe even a piece of fabric, piece of cloth, I think should work. But just something to keep stuff from falling into here. Just in case anything drops. Don't want it to get crunched up and, you know, don't want, don't want to get stuff getting into the fan. Which is probably just going to blast right out anyway. So I want to test this without anything else. So no more holes at the top for intake. I did originally in my design think that I was going to need to put something and maybe with even a one-way airflow valve that would let in air when the fan was on but otherwise would be shut off. But I'm thinking that maybe it'll work just fine as it is and I don't think, I mean it's definitely not going to pull a vacuum or anything but I imagine that it would just kind of help to circulate the air in, in there and draw it out. I mean, with holes, it'd probably be more efficient and maybe that would work. Maybe even with a bunch of small holes at the top here, it would still keep in the humidity. I'm just not sure. And, you know, I can't put the plastic back. I can always cut it out, but I can't put it back. So before I start drilling anything in here, uh, I want to test it with just the lid completely whole. So let's just give this a quick test. So I'm going to just put a couple of jars in here that are closed up just to help support a platform. I'm going to use just this paper plate. You can see that there's still about a centimeter gap around the perimeter there. And inside we're going to put some of this orange Julius that I just harvested. So it should have plenty of moisture and we can just do a quick test here, proof of concept basically, to see if the humidity will change. So right now the ambient is 50%. So I'm going to go ahead and reset it. Okay, so I went to 53, but whatever, around 50%. Uh, you can see the high has been reset to 53. So, let me spin this around for you guys. I'm just going to put it right here. Okay, so right now it's reading 56 as I close the lid. The fan is off, and so let's just give it um, five minutes, see what happens. All right, so let's check it out. So it started at an ambient of 50%, then we put the buds in, and look at this, 67. So that's working just kind of as I hoped, so I bet this will reach 70 so we're working right in that range of 55 to 65 as we want. Able to maintain a higher humidity than the ambient. So I'd say this uh, proof of concept is a success. So now I'm going to turn on the fan. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it's on. And I'm going to go ahead and close the lid up. If I can. You can kind of hear it whistling. 
So this seems to have a pretty good draw if there is air coming in, but the slit is airtight. So one other thing you can notice is that uh, if you feel with your hand the output of this blower fan, it definitely re reduces significantly once you put the lid on. Anyway, so we're going to give that about five minutes, and while we do that, I'm going to enjoy this uh, homegrown melon. The variety here is honeydew, and you can see it gets this tiny bit of red just when it's ripe. Man, yeah, the smell of a homegrown, perfectly ripened melon is pretty indescribable. You're almost never going to find one in the stores just because they don't last at all. You know, this will be at its peak ripeness for just a few days. Yeah, so this is a variety hoodoo. We planted them quite late, so they're quite small, but hey, m really nice, sweet, homegrown melon in November in Oregon. I think that's a pretty good result. And this one, you know, has that typical ripe cantaloupe smell, but also kind of has notes of uh, maple syrup and uh, molasses, so kind of that caramelly sugar smell. All right, so let's take a look at if anything has happened. Now, of course, these are very fresh buds. I think I've heard of people who use the commercial products uh, say that they hang them for a day or two and then chop them up into individual pieces and put them in. So it might be difficult for it to exhaust the air here, but look at this, 58%, <clears throat> 57. So it was at 67 before we turned the fan on and it recorded a max of 69. So it spiked a little bit, kind of like we expect. And it dropped a whole 10% down. Yeah, and I bet if this was a basket or even if we put some lines across like this and then we could hang whole branches actually you know what i bet you could put in two layers of branches this size in here that's gonna do it for today in the next one we're gonna add our humidity controller for a little bit of automation because i don't want to sit here and cycle it on and off obviously and uh yeah i think uh this is gonna work out good Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next one.